loving God, we are in constant need of being reawakened. We see and hear only a small portion of what you want to show us or say. We tend to hold fast to what we have always thought and to hear and see what is familiar. We filter out what doesn't reinforce our mindset. Help us to truly humble ourselves and to be made new in ways we cannot predict in advance. Help us to offer ourselves to you without knowing where it will lead or who you will lead us to learn from. Help us also to share without fear what you would speak through us, following in the path of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Please be seated. You have cousins, great. Other things? We're thankful for that uh, we had food on the table. Thankful to have food on the table. That's, that's a good thing because not everyone does have as much as they need, right? Anyone else thankful for anything in particular? I'm thankful for the Yankees. Thankful for the Yankees, okay. <laughs> How about you? Thankful for your family, good. I'm thankful too that I got to see some family over the weekend and safe travels on the roads. Now, a lot of people think of the holiday as a time to go shopping. And uh, you've heard of uh, Black Friday, right? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> this, this is my, one of my favorite pillows at home, and it's really fun, and I like it a lot. But what do you think would happen if it was Black Friday and they had a big sale on pillows? Let's say the pillow's over here, and there's a limited number, and everybody goes in the store. Can you show me what you think would happen? Maybe uh, there's just a couple pillows. Act it out, okay? Show me what would happen. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know, don't you? You do know. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Because there's never enough for everybody who wants them. And so people run in. And I saw a video over the weekend of a sales girl going, what on earth? Because all these people were running to get something they wanted. It was a hoodie with a certain pattern. They liked it. They all ran, practically ran each other over. So how might... As people of faith in God, how might we approach things differently than that? Do you think there's <coughs> maybe a little problem with that? Everybody like trampling each other to get stuff? They could get, <coughs> they could get hurt, right? It's actually pretty savage. It's pretty savage, yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> because they're caring more about what they can get than the people, right? Because they could hurt each other. Now, it's nice to get a good sale once in a while. That's true. But we actually feel better when we give than when we're just greedy and want everything for ourselves, right? So I wanted to show you today this project that our church is going to be doing. And these are Christmas bags for children. Just like we gave those blankets to the foster children. And it felt really good, I'm sure, to help bless them last week and say prayers over them. On the 16th, the day of your pageant, we're going to be putting together these bags with gifts for children. So let's see what's inside. You want to each pull something out? Also, you can pull out the first thing. What have we got? Paper. Hold it up so the congregation can see. So we've got construction paper. What else have we got? Uh, a sketch notebook. A sketch pad. Okay. Hold it high, Natalie. It's a little smaller, so... Okay, this is a book. This is actually like a storybook to read. And what goes with it? Stickers. Stickers. What else do we have? Markers. Markers. Washable markers, too. I was told by the outreach chair that's because they might try to walk up, draw on the walls and we want them washable, right? Okay, what else, Mickey? Uh, and washable crayons. Great. There's a couple more things in there, too. We've got a little beanbag frog. A little beanbag frog. We've got scissors. And we have glue sticks. So every single one of these bags will have these items. So now you can put the items back in. And so the congregation is going to be invited to make donations for these. They're $20 each to make a nice bag of all these items for children. And then we're going to invite our children and adults to help put them together on the 16th after church. So that's very exciting. I'm going to put this one up by the altar so we can start praying now for all the children who are going to receive these gift bags. 
So that's a very different spirit than rushing to get everything for ourselves, right? To give for others and the joy that we have. So let's take a prayer. Gracious God, thank you for Thanksgiving, for a time to think about all the things that we're grateful for that aren't things at all. They're people and their experiences and our relationship with you and the love that you have for us. That's with us every day of our lives. And we pray for lots of beautiful children's bags to make children very happy at Christmas <clears throat> as we celebrate the birth of your son. Amen. This is a reading from Psalms chapter 42, verses 1 through 3. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? And from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep in his right hand and the goats in the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it when we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked, or sick or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. O oh God, our maker and our provider, Thank you for Jesus' bold parables. Bold parables that wake us up, too, to your call to us. And we pray that we might hear the call and act on it. In Jesus' name, amen. So when did we see you? When did we see you, Jesus? This familiar parable reminds us to ask ourselves that question. Not just in the past tense, when did we see you? But when will we see you, future? Or how am I seeing you right this very moment? Right? Maybe a better question is when did we not see you? 
Aren't we seeing Jesus around us all the time? By the definition of that parable, the people named in that parable are really with us all the time, aren't they? People who are sick, strangers. How many people bump into strangers every day, right? As we go downtown, as we drive around, as we go to various grocery stores or wherever we go, there's always strangers around. So Jesus is always around. When did we not see you? When did we just have tunnel vision and stick to our task and miss seeing you, Jesus? Last week, our bishop came as a shepherd called by Jesus and serving our church with Jesus in his heart. And I think we felt a lot of warmth and love from him, and it was very exciting. And some of us stayed afterward for question and answer time with him during the luncheon. And one of the things he said was, I appointed your pastor not to this church, so some ears probably perked up, huh? But to Mamaroneck. He said, I appointed her to walk the streets. So Ron and I had a, a little chuckle about that later. I didn't know I was appointed to be a streetwalker. <laughs> Pretty interesting, right? Okay. But in all honesty, it is powerful. I pointed you to walk the streets. And what did he say in our benediction at the end of the service? He said, this is my favorite benediction. Get out of here. And then he followed it with words of call to ministry. Get out of here and serve God. And I don't have his exact words, but that was the gist of it. Get out of the building. Get out. Walk the streets. So it's not just me, but all of us walk the streets or get out among the people. And so Monday I said, yeah, I really gotta walk the streets a little more. And uh, so that evening I walked downtown and I just made sure I made a big loop. And sure enough, I, I got to see a woman that I recognized that I've spoken to a few times who's without a residence. And I got to say hello to her. And I thought, what if I hadn't walked the streets that night? You know, that would be one less hello that she would have that night. And so there is something to be said about walking the streets and just getting out of our comfortable homes, our comfortable building, and just getting out there where the people are. I also thought, gee, next year when we have the turkey trot, we should all be at the turkey trot, and we won't have service on that day, and we should get out there, and we should be in the turkey trot as a UMC team or cheering people on. We should go where the people are, rather than fight our way around the people to come here. Wesley would say, get out where they are. Go be with the people of your community and let them know that you're here and you care. So our voices from the balcony this morning were meant to be a little bit of a wake up. Different people playing roles of people in need in the community. You know, someone addicted to drugs, someone who's homeless, someone who's experienced prejudice, someone, um, let's see, what was the other one? <laughs> the fourth one, but... Uh, the person who was lonely, that's right, new to the area, young person. How many people do we know like that, that go through difficult transitions in life, moving to new communities or struggling with addiction or struggling with all kinds of things, and they're all around us. So this psalm is kind of the voice of someone crying out to God with tears. God, help me, right? That's a summary of that psalm. And then the voices that came at the end of that skit earlier were really all of us saying, we're here, God will work through us. And then we really have to believe that, that God can work through us, that God's answer isn't something that just comes from the sky, but it comes through all of us. And it's exciting to realize that we can be that answer. And of course, not just us. I don't want to sound like our church is the only group of people that God can work through. That's certainly not true. But just to say that we're part of those whom God can work through to answer those prayers and comfort after those tears. One of the things I was reminded of as we got ready for the special Sunday with the bishop is how easy it is to get excited about people with positions of power and titles and famous people, right? We get excited when we get to meet people who are famous. Uh, just recently, Kristen Gill and I were talking about who are the famous Nashville people that live near you? This was me initiating that conversation, I'll admit it. I said, I'm sorry, anywhere near Dolly Parton? Really, you're somewhat near Amy Grant? That's amazing, you know. Well, we all have a little of that in us, right? 
Back at my previous congregation, I used to get excited when some famous politicians came at Christmas and Easter. At least the first few times, it was such a novelty, and I couldn't believe it was happening. It was rather surreal. So now I was excited that our bishop was coming, and so much so that I asked him to do so much that Karina told me later, did you realize that the service went two hours? I said, no, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I was so excited about the bishop being here. So I say this today because as we look at this parable, it reminds us of that human tendency that we have to decide who the important people are, the ones we got to meet because they're famous or important. And I happen to love our bishop, and he has a heart of Christ. And so it doesn't take anything away from my joy that he was with us and blessed people. I love our time of blessing at the altar and having the children bless blankets with him. It's just really precious to me. But this parable reminds us that in God's eyes, the person on the street carrying bags with no home, who doesn't talk to a lot of people, is a VIP. In God's eyes, the person who's struggling or the person in the hospital that's barely hanging on is a VIP. And so this is a sobering parable because it does keep reminding us what the values of Jesus are and how we have to counteract some of the worldly tendencies like the rushing for things on Black Friday. Um, we have to keep saying, wait, is this the values of Jesus or is this something else? And so I'm thankful for the reminders that Jesus gives us. Normally we call this Christ the King Sunday, but I put in the bulletin Christ the Compassionate. Because even the image of King can reinforce a sort of hierarchical understanding of the world. So I think Christ the Compassionate expresses a little more how Jesus moves among us and how Jesus uses power. So Jesus really brings the power of love and through the least of these and to the least of these, right? Through each of us, if we humble ourselves, that's how he works. So not so much like a king that sends out decrees and lords it over others, but as the compassionate one who knows the rule of love and brings the rule of love. I also am always fond of seeing sayings that talk about how God doesn't judge, but God just loves and helps. And that's hard to remember, too, because we set up a hierarchy where we judge others, too. And again, I'm going to include myself, because I can do that, and think, oh, boy, you know, if this person would only do this or that to help themselves, why don't they do this? Da, 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 da. Our minds go like that. So sometimes when we do that, we're actually putting ourselves above the other person, because we think we know better how they should live their life. But that's not Christ. He doesn't do that. He just goes to the need with love. So we're constantly being challenged to be more like Jesus. And as we celebrate this Thanksgiving weekend, we think about how can we pass on those blessings a little bit more, not just enjoy them for ourselves, but pass them on. And it really does involve getting out there, or as the bishop said, getting out of here. So when will we see Jesus? We will see Jesus in the person trying to cross the street in a baby carriage. We'll see Jesus in the transgender person walking down the street wondering if someone's going to shout a slur or even kill them. We're going to see Jesus when we turn on the news and we see people who are looking for a safe place to live, a safe place to be, who often are escaping great violence and danger. We're going to see Jesus in people who are incarcerated and their families. We're going to see Jesus in each of the children that we do bags for. So I want you to close your eyes now. And I want you to just think back on this past weekend. When did you see Jesus in another person? When did you see a person in need of clothing or shelter, a person who is sick. When did you see a person who was a stranger to you? When did you see, maybe even on the news, a person going to prison or in prison? When did you see a person who was thirsty or hungry? And now I want 
want you to imagine Jesus not as that person, but as the helper, the compassionate one. What does Jesus say to that person? What does Jesus do? Oh God, as we reflect, we know that we need your help to continually open up our hearts, open up our lives to more fully embrace people that you love. Help us to see them and love them as you love them. Work through us as your body. Amen. So as we continue our worship with perhaps a little more mindfulness of those around us who might be in need. We chose another Thanksgiving hymn that also broadens this seeing of God, the seeing of Jesus in what's around us. And this is all creatures of our God and King. It reminds us to see our Creator in all living things, too. So it's 62. Let's stand and sing. I want to go back and share some opportunities for ministry, really just celebrate some things happening in the life of our church. First of all, again, a huge thanks to all of you who helped make last Sunday extra special. Those who worked on our luncheon, it was beautiful, nice hospitality for the bishop and for all who were here, and for all who took part in any way in service, we really thank you. In your bulletin today, you'll see that next Sunday we have a very special music concert because we believe we're actually entering Advent next week. So this is the Merry Little Christmas concert by the choir, bell choir, and instrumentalists. So come out at 4 o'clock and I hope you can enjoy that. 
know, the season gets very busy, but this is your chance to put your feet up, take a deep breath, not do any preparations at home, but just come and soak up the music of the season and let it uplift you. So next Sunday, and if you'd like, pass on your flyer to a friend or put it up somewhere that you travel during the week so that others can come to the church for that. I'm going to ask Carol to come up and talk about the survey that's in your bulletin. that there's a one-page survey front and back in your bulletin. It's called the Health Ministry Survey. Um, as many of you know, I'm a nurse practitioner, and recently I've been taking a course about health ministries, which we'd like to start in this church. So in order to plan for that, I need to know what, if any, types of lectures, classes, education, groups, individual uh, sessions you might like to have. So I would really appreciate it if you completed that survey and you gave it to me. You can be anonymous, you can put your name on it. It's important that I have back the surveys to really know what the congregation is looking for or might enjoy or benefit from. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. We appreciate it. So yeah, you can fill those out in the coffee hour if you like, right? Good. I also just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who've responded so wonderfully to our stewardship campaign, and so you see the thermometers going up, and so, and I saw more pledges going in today, and it's really any time you can make a pledge. It's not just during the month of November, but we're very pleased with already the, um, the wonderful outpouring. So thank you to everybody who is part of the supporting of the church financially. It really blesses many people out in the community. Um, there's information in the bulletin also about um, the Westchester Chorale that Charlotte Smith is singing in, so that's another music opportunity. The pageant Sunday will be December 16th, and then we'll put together the bags after church. The youth group will be doing bowling on the 9th and having a Christmas party on the 16th in the evening, so information's going out about that. So we're really looking forward to Advent together. So tell a friend, my friend. It'll be very nice. And thank you to the Jennings for hosting Coffee Hour today. Appreciate that. So now we're going to take up our offerings for the morning. And the bell choir is going to come back for another number. out more to her and keep you posted on how she wants to honor and remember him. But we're thinking of Janice today. He can't be with us today. Um, also, Maureen Von Shea's mother passed over the weekend, Atali Vaughn. So she is heading out to that funeral this week. So please continue to lift her up. She was at our 8 o'clock service and we were able to express our condolences. Um, Richie also told me that a neighbor of his named Walter passed away, and so our condolences, Richie, and we pray for all of Walter's loved ones. So, all of our prayers are going to make a difference in bringing comfort to those families. Let's be in prayer now. Oh, great and mighty God, we come to you today with full hearts. We're just so glad that we can be connected. And through that connection, we can help bear one another's burdens. 
And we thank you that our joys also are double, tripled, magnified because we share them together. We give you thanks for lives well lived, lives that have touched our hearts. We thank you for the days when George Galasso was able to come to our coffee hour and say thanks for all the prayers and say that from the heart. And for Janice sharing the power of prayer and how it sustained George through some difficult times and sustained her. And we thank you for Maureen's faithfulness coming to service today with a smile on her face, even though it's a difficult time. And so we just pray that we also might have that kind of strength, that even as we navigate the inevitable losses of life, that we always keep in mind that we're connected to so many people we love, and that you undergird and sustain us. Today, oh God, our prayers go out also to those in California who've gone through losses, and we Give thanks for our Methodist Church outreach, the ways that we will be able to impact in the rebuilding phase and even in providing counseling to people who've gone through the loss. So we pray for all of those efforts and the ways that we might join in weeks ahead. Lord, we pray for all those who are still traveling this holiday for safe travels home. We give thanks for those who've returned safely and we pray that we can keep the joy and the connection that we've had with family and friends over the weekend. Keep that going all year round. Thank you for warming our hearts and our, our homes and for the many ways that you've touched us in this past week and weekend. And again, help us to be mindful of those around us in the community and new ways that we can reach out to meet those needs. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we end on a beautiful praise note for the beauty of the earth, verses 1 to 4. And after that, we do invite you to come in for coffee and fellowship, just through the front doors here. So please stand, number 92.
sisters, once again, get out of here and serve God.